Welcome to summer school. Today's lesson will help you find the cheapest flights, navigate through any itinerary, and find the best food in the city. Let's jump into our top five travel websites. Welcome to the Travel More podcast. Each episode, we share custom itineraries, travel hacks, expert advice, and even stories of our past travel failures to help you level up your travel game. I'm Shelly, a lover of plans, itineraries, and cheap flights. I'm an expert deal finder with one eye always on the budget. And I'm Bruce, the improviser, ready to pick up where plans fail to turn letdowns into unexpected trip favorites. We're here to bust through barriers that stop you from making your travel dreams a reality. So book that flight, buy the tickets, and say hello to your next adventure. This is the Travel More Podcast. Welcome back to the Travel More Podcast. Summer school! Woohoo, summer! <laughs> so, you know, each week we're going to be bringing you bite-sized episodes to help you level up your travel experience. And this week is all about our top five travel websites and how they can help you plan your next trip. And before we get into that, I do want to send out a special thank you to Holly from Connecticut Thanks for so much. <laughs> supporting our show through our buy us a coffee link down in the show notes. So thank you so much. We love that. And that helps us bring um, all this fun information to you. So thank you so much, Holly. Thank you, Holly. All right. So the websites we're going to be sharing um are our kind of utility belt of travel planning tools. Ooh, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> um, none of the websites require signups or email addresses. They're all free to use, um, at least in the way that we use them. Right. Um, and we'll also post some tutorials on our YouTube channel for some of the more complicated ones, and that is Travel More Podcast as well. So easy to find us there. So let's talk about our first one. Google Flights. Yeah, that's our probably most loved travel resource. And, you know, if you don't know what Google Flights is, it's just another version of Google. It's a yep. search engine. Yeah, for, but for flights. And we talk about going or Scotch Cheap Flights all the time, and we absolutely love that service, so there's no need to put it on this um, top five. But ultimately, even with Scotch Cheap Flights, we come back to Google to see if the routes and the dates and all of that work for us. Right, because going, Scotch Cheap Flights, they're going to give you the idea of the itinerary or the price drop. Well, mm -hmm. ultimately, you're going to go on Google or like double check it and, and find your um, flight. Yeah. So Google Flights aggregates flight information for most carriers worldwide. They pull prices from more than 300 airlines and online travel agencies. So it's fair to say they're going to give you this wide range of options for cheap tickets and good routes. And, you know, there are a couple of airlines that don't show up on Google Flights. And one of the biggest is Southwest. And there are a couple other smaller international airlines, especially in Asia, but it does give you an amazing range of flights and prices. And it also allows you to track um, prices. So this is a really great tool if you know you're going to go somewhere and it's far out. In fact, I always have a couple of tracking prices pretty much at all times. And it'll give you a email through your Google account. Now, this is the one time you will have to sign in if you're going to use it, but it will email you. Um, if your flight goes up or down so you can kind of see how the prices are trending if you know you're going to go somewhere at a certain time frame um, and it also shows you past prices so if you're going to go bu book something you can see well what is the price done in the last right. six months that, that's probably the nicest feature of it is that you kind of get a sense of what you could expect to pay at different times of year mm -hmm. and historically what the cost is with an alert built in you just put your email in yeah so i mean just a really incredible flight tool so 100% recommend using that all the time. Definitely. All right, so our number two website is Rome to Rio. This one's probably a little lesser known, um, but it's a total game changer if you're planning a multi-city trip. So Rome to Rio essentially takes your destinations and then tells you all the transportation options that exist between the two cities and their prices. For example, if you look at London to Paris, you'll see a dozen different options. Trains, flights, ride shares, buses, you get it all and all come with like an example price. Now, if you click to buy now, they'll take you to OTAs. So I would recommend just using it as a planning tool, not something to book through. And OTAs, in case you're not sure, is an online travel agent, which is a third party booking site like Expedia or Orbitz. So I wouldn't exactly recommend booking through those, but it does give you the options, which I think, I mean, we have used that a few times with our more complicated itineraries. Oh, 100%, especially if it's a place we haven't been or we have a weird route that we're not sure if a train will do it alone. Yeah, actually, we just use it uh, for this summer. We're going to go. Norway? Yeah, well, we're going to go Copenhagen to Frankfurt. And I was oh, yeah. trying to see if flights were the 
cheapest and best as, as opposed option. to like a train or something yeah exactly and so i did find that out and i wouldn't have guessed that that the flight was going to be the cheaper way but it 100 percent was well and we, we also did it for norway for this summer where we we're trying to figure out the best way to get a bus or maybe rent a car or mm-hmm. even use a ferry, the, a ferry there's right? a million things yeah and they aggregate all that data again so and every time i check it it's been accurate yeah so you always want to double check because one thing i'll tell you in europe <laughs> is they strike a lot yeah <laughs> so sometimes rome to rio will tell you the the, the typical route that exists but then you always want to go check it out from the actual uh, provider of course it's very similar to google flights in that way where it's essentially a search engine for transportation so just an amazing resource really all right number three i think a lot of people use this one but it's we got to have it on the list mm-hmm. trip advisor yeah well i think there are a lot of different kind of search engine like yelp trip advisor culture trip i think there's like a few different like ways to find things to do in food in different areas but i think the best one, hands down, is TripAdvisor. This is how we always find yeah, amazing food. Yeah, this is food. specifically for restaurants, food, and yeah, all of that. Yeah, 100%. Um, so not only does it have a plethora of reviews and discussion boards that have been super helpful on more than one occasion, especially if you're doing things like traveling over Christmas, which we often do. It'll tell you if like the city tends to shut down at Christmas or if certain things are open. Really great discussion boards for that reason. Um, but they also have a way, my favorite thing, to search for cheap eats in a city. Dude, that's the best part. It is 100% the best tip for finding, like, hidden gyms. You know what I mean? We we use this 100% of the time we travel. Yeah, I don't know that there's ever a time we don't check out TripAdvisor. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'll say, going back to Google... I, I still really like to use Google reviews as well, mm-hmm. but I find that TripAdvisor is a lot easier to categorize restaurants in a, in a certain way. Yeah. So when you look for cheap eats or you're looking at a certain time of year, the information is just more obvious there and they generate these lists. Yeah, I think the cheap eats function is oh, just it's a game changer. Um, we found really amazing restaurant, like a really small mom and pop in, um, in Greece when we went. Yes, we also that found that one, one in Budapest. Remember that was like that mom and pop that was like off the beaten path. Right, and that was that was one of the best restaurants yeah. we found. And honestly, that is always kind of our reaction to these ones we find on TripAdvisor, like cheap eats. It's like, wow, that was like the best one we had the whole trip. You totally remind me of a story too when we were out west on our American road trip. Mm-hmm. I I feel like we found a Mexican restaurant on a <gasps> cheap eats through TripAdvisor. Oh Advisor, yeah, that one was, was a deep cut. I don't even know what town it was, but it was before you get to Wyoming. Wait, was it a town? I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> it was uh, a settlement. <laughs> it, we were served on paper plates that was the best though it was well, you know, so good because like without searching for it we were on the highway yeah and we just with our location found best cheap mexican around and man it was good yeah it was amazing so TripAdvisor cheap eats is your friend if you're vi- well really if you're traveling anywhere or even if you want a new restaurant in your own town like really it's an awesome resource number four all right number four is booking.com and, you know, you probably already know about Booking.com, but we actually don't use it as it's really intended. Mm-hmm. This is more of a planning tool that we don't actually book on. Uh, similar to what we were just saying, we don't really book through OTAs, online travel agents like Expedia, Booking.com, Orbitz. Um, we use this to get a feel for hotel prices in an area when we're planning budgets or booking like a really great like going flight. We just want to see if the hotels will fit into our budgets. We mentioned this in the yeah. budget episode as well, but we'll mention it again here because it is a resource that, again, if we're trying to plan, we use like pretty much 100% of the time. Yep, and I mean, this goes back to that strategy of not going destination first, but mm-hmm. thinking budget. Yeah. So when you find that going price you know the uh, the flight drops Mm -hmm. then you want to get a sense of how much it's going to cost booking.com is really easy because it'll give you like the whole cost yeah for like the week yeah not per day night yeah which is very nice and there are times that we've booked through booking.com like if a hotel's website was like super glitchy or they weren't up front with their cancellation policies because booking.com is very upfront with their book with their like cancellation yeah it's very transparent yeah so if i can't figure out the exact terms of a booking on a website then sometimes i will book with booking.com and we did have that nightmare taxi in greece this is the Often, only yeah. time we've been disappointed with Booking.com was that well, we booked a taxi. To be it. fair, Booking.com got us the refund. I think the taxi company was messed it up. Yeah. Yes. So. so even the one time we were disappointed, it did end up working well, not totally in our favor, but we did get the money back. Yeah, for sure. And we did get this last time we were in London, we booked through Booking.com because the hotel's website was glitchy. It wasn't letting us book. 
And it ended up coming with a free airport transfer transfer from Gatwick. That would have cost us over <laughs> hundreds $100. of dollars. Yeah, I mean not hundreds, yeah. but over yeah, one hundred dollars. Sure. Yeah, it was a private. And that was really transfer. nice. Yeah. It was really nice. It was nice. a really cool van. So sometimes it works out, but most of the time we're just using it kind of as that planning tool. All right. So last but not least, number five, Viator. So um, this one is again we're using it to plan, not book. Viator does have some um, mixed reviews, but essentially what it is, is it's a booking platform for tours. So group tours, things like that. Um, They don't have the best track record with booking. uh, We don't have the best track record booking tours with them. But to be fair, we've only booked the one tour. Right. And then Um, we had to cancel. We had to cancel (laughs) in Doha. And the cancellation was super smooth, but generally we do like booking direct. Um, I use this again. We're going back to London since it was our most recent tour. I use this to look and see kind of what tours were available in London and what kind of things I wanted to do since it's such a huge city. I thought like, I'll just see what other people are doing. Which is overwhelming at first, to be honest. Oh, it can it like, be extremely so overwhelming. Many ways. So, but the yeah. nice thing about Viator is that, you know, through, it helped us kind of see what was popular and available. And that's how we found our Stonehenge, Windsor, Castle, and Oxford tour in England. Yeah. And I found the company and I looked them up separately off the site, saw that they had good reviews on TripAdvisor and Google, which is my two go-tos, and um, then booked it directly with them, which wasn't any more expensive. Uh, I think it was probably about the same price. But it was super easy, and we had a great time on that tour. So I think it was a great way to find those things without I, looking through, yeah. like, a thousand blogs. I agree, <laughs> and I think that's the key with these last couple top fives, like Viador, Booking.com, mm-hmm. TripAdvisor. They're giving you an aggregated list that mm-hmm. I usually – you can trust. You get the lay of the land. Yeah, and it has those, like, peer kind of reviews. So yep. you can see what comes up at the top because that's what has the most reviews. So I think that they're great ways to kind of get a good lay of the land for planning purposes. So that wraps up our top five go-to websites for planning travel. Yeah, we told you it's going to be a quick episode. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully not too quick. (laughs) But before we go, we do have one bonus. Yeah, this is a really cool thing I actually heard from a friend. And it's, it's an app. It's called Splitwise. And it helps you keep track of everyone's expenses in a group. So you kind of know who's who owes who at the end. So it's like, you know, if Bruce picks up dinner this night and our friend picks up dinner the next night, you kind of just put everyone's expenses into this app. And at the end, they'll say, OK, Bruce actually doesn't owe anyone money, but I owe Bruce two dollars because right. at the end of the day, it kind of evened out except for this. It's so much easier than keeping so notes easier. or whatever what I've been doing in the past. Like, yeah, oh my we, gosh. we literally been like on the <laughs> notes app and that's just annoying. Yep. <laughs> so or or keeping all your receipts and everything. Which... That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a cool app. I uh, just thought we'd bring that one out there too if you have any group travel coming up. So we hope you've enjoyed our rundown of our top travel websites. We have a couple tutorials of how we use these sites on our YouTube channel. And you can find the links to all these websites, our YouTube channel, and our exclusive Insider Travel Tip Facebook group in the show notes. Join us next week where we're going to break down travel hacking lingo into easy digestible pieces so that we can bring you some more travel hacking advice later in the summer. See you next time. Did you know that every time you book a Disney or Universal vacation, you're paying for a service that you may not even be using? Really? That's right. Travel agent costs are added to your Disney or universal vacation whether you use one or not so you're telling me that i'm paying for something even though i'm not getting the help you got it so next time you want to book a theme park vacation make your money work for you by booking with magic pass travel you'll get our expertise and years of experience without paying any extra and while supporting a small business check out our show notes to find our contact information can't wait to help you plan your next adventure